Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to bending down to pick up a pen and tearing a tendon in your arm in the process. I don't feasibly know how that's possible, but apparently I've managed it, henceforth the sling. Uh, otherwise known as a Tarkov guide. Oh boy, oh boy, it is, today is all about learning for us. For me, I'm learning to never reach down for anything I drop on the ground ever again. And for you guys, well, I'm hopefully going to be using today's video to help you learn about the power and variation for a new weapon that you may not have used before. Or, at the very least, in my eyes, a very highly underrated weapon by veterans and a weapon that new players feel too scared to utilize to its fullest. The SA-58. That one weapon that you'll likely see a lot of in your loadout as a scav in the early stages of Tarkov, and occasionally you'll get killed by it from about a thousand meters away by some chad with a thermal. Suffice to say, this weapon is rather polarized in the people's in the way people perceive it within the world of Tarkov. And I want to use this video to not only show you that this weapon's ridiculous, weak, recoil, general confusing modding, and size is nothing to be afraid of, but I also want to show you the many different faces the SA-58 can come in, to make even a novice to Tarkov have a blast with, and to show veterans looking at for an alternative to that cliche M4 just why this weapon should be a good option for anyone. To start with, let's take a quick look at what this hot take of a weapon will be slugging down range towards your enemy in terms of ammo. As of this video, there are currently three main ammo types for this gun, at least within the quote-unquote meta of what most people use. There are some others, but these are the ones you'll find more often being used than anything else. The M80, the M62, and the M61. For all intents and purposes, the simple fact here is the M61 is the strongest of all of these ammo types, followed closely by the M62, and both will have high potency of penetration and overall damage. However, it is worth noting that the M80 is actually really good as well, and deals higher base damage than the aforementioned ammo, but has less penetration and armor damage. But it also costs three times less than the M62 and the M61, so this is one of those ammo types where all forms of it are ridiculously powerful but min-maxing will make you wonder why your wallet is so empty. So in short, M80 is the go-to if you want to value your wallet and still pack a wallop, or use M61 and M62 if you feel like you're going to be going up against some very geared boys, or if you feel like you just have the bank to support it. Now, let's take a look at the gun itself, shall we? The SA-58, by its default form, is relatively cheap and effective for what it is, and is tradable from Peacekeeper at level 2 for some very simple items, and, at pe and is also then purchasable at level 3 Peacekeeper for about $700, as well as also a barter item from Mechanic as well, just in case you have some Bitcoins or GP coins sitting around. And once again, this weapon will also frequently appear as a usable weapon on your scav. Additionally, and although unlikely, the SA-58 does does appear on scav raiders in a half decently modded form as well. So if you get lucky and go into labs or maybe you find a scav raider on reserve, you can get a half decently kitted SA-58 for basically near to nothing so long as you survive. Through the course of this video, I want to demonstrate some new player incentivized builds, I want to demonstrate some midway builds, and also some more higher value end goal builds that you want to look for. Again, keeping in mind that these videos are designed for a new player to approach and understand the weapon from the beginning values all the way up until how it can look when you reach its end potential. And when we look at this weapon in its default form, it still has some pretty damn decent stats. Again, the biggest off-putting for, uh, form is the massive recoil it has. But this is one of those things to realize. The less you mod the SA-58, the more you have to counter and compensate for the recoil in your own stance. The main way to do this is relying more on hip firing and point firing and using the semi-auto mode. And something that should be said is that although the accuracy is most certainly one of the biggest off-putting parts to this gun, it can be countered not only by the aforementioned methods, but a laser dot makes a huge difference as well. My personal choice would be the Holosun red dot, which you can then put into uh, red light mode, which is the one where you don't have the actual dot, but instead the red flashlight mode. That then allows your grouping on hip firing and point firing to be far more accurate. So as we upgrade this gun, we'll notice very evidently just how much more potent it becomes as more and more attachments go on there. And as much as people may lead you to believe, this weapon can be very cheap to mod to a decent standard, and even if you are utilizing this in an unmodded form, it can still absolutely take down any enemy, any PMC, any raider, very easily. It's all about adjusting your playstyle to meet the standard of the gun you have.
So in its default form, this gun has low ergo and very high recoil. So why would you want to use it? Well, not only is it rather cheap in the early stage, but you are slugging some very high caliber rounds down the field. And even at the unmodded form that it comes in, all you would have to do to adjust to its playstyle is to semi-fire, to fire one bullet at a time, to compensate for the high swing and sway of the uh, low the high recoil you're going to have. And in its default form, whether you're using it on a SCAV or a PMC, this is always worth to take in just for the sheer sake of having those big chunky rounds that can penetrate and deal huge damage to very geared boys. Again, you'll just not want to utilize the full auto mode as much unless you're really, really close to your enemy. But as we look to upgrade this gun to improve recoil control and ergo, we'll find that the SA-58 offers simplicity for attachments and scope at a low cost when you go for the mid-range attachments. In this version we have here, not only does it help demonstrate simple modding semantics with, within Tarkov and also offers a very affordable form of the SA-58, which is not only improving the recoil and ergo to make it far more controllable, even when ADSing, the main additions here being the DS Arms Extreme Duty cover from Mechanic Level 3, allowing for an optic of your choice. As well as that, we have the best addition to this, for my, in my opinion, for a new player, which is the DS Arms Quad Rail full-length foregrip, allowing for a grip and side attachment of your choice. Like a laser dot, for example, as we mentioned earlier, which are extremely useful, especially for those when, you want, when you're wanting to get your grouping to be a bit tighter. And for foregrip, it is personal choice here, but trying to compound the efforts towards reducing recoil with your add-ons is very important. The RK2 for a mid-tier setup is always a go-to for the recoil reduction, but that's very expensive for a new player, so um, when you're looking for a mid-tier build, I would very much recommend going for the RK5 as an alternative. And finally, to help further that reduction of recoil and everything else you're looking to do here, the Fortis Red Break is the best non-silencer recoil reduction uh, in the early stage there is. Although the option for the A3 adapter combined with the blast mitigation device and then the Lantock dragon muzzle brake is a good choice as well, this is A, very expensive, and B, far more convoluted and having three separate components trying to put it together rather than just having one attachment that just makes life a bit easier for you. At the end of the day, whatever floats you go and whatever makes life simple for you, go for it. When it comes to the SA-58, recoil reduction should be your priority in my eyes. The SA-58 is a bit weird to mod in the early stage, but when you simplify it down to si the simple mechanics of the muzzle, the foregrip, and the buttstock, you'll find this that modding the SA-58 becomes far simpler. And finally, for the stock, the best midline to go for is the DSA BRS buttstock, as it is cheap enough to keep on a budget and gives very, very good benefits for recoil reduction and ergonomics. And then finally, my dudes, the end goal. We can kind of look at this as a final boss of the SA-58 modding style, if you will, of what gives you the most ideal SA-58 in terms of stats of recoil and ergo. And at the end of the day, this one also looks a bit like a badass as well. This one is where budget isn't an issue and one that will give you possibly the best ergo and recoil management of all builds for the SA-58. So this does look a little bit similar to our previous one, however there are some rather big differences. And the biggest of differences we have made is the butt stock. This has been upgraded to the DSA SPR stock, which is by far the best of all stocks to go for with the SA-58 in terms of raw numbers. Then we also have replaced the foregrip with the Vitor Casv Fal, which is once again pretty much the best in slot for this gun and is relatively cheap. The reason we don't see it for the previous forms of this gun is because of the additional need to attach fiddly little rail attachments. In this case, a 5-inch and 4-inch Vitor guide. As for the muzzle, we have gone with something a bit more expensive. And the threesome combo mentioned before with the A3 adapter, the Blast 3 mitigation device, and the Lantock Dragon muzzle is a go-to choice here. Uh, however, there is a fun alternative if you wish to spend a little bit more money. You can also then use the Daniel Defense Wave Muzzle Brake with the Daniel Defense Wave QD Sound Suppressor, which, if you combine all this together, gives you the best form of recoil reduction and ergo you can get with this gun. But even with all that on there, 
there is still going to be a fair decent amount of recoil when you are ADSing. So again, even in its fullest of kit, you have to take into consideration that you are very likely going to be dealing with some form of recoil. So if recoil, dealing with recoil is not your thing, then maybe you might want to stick with the M4. But you'll be missing out on possibly, one in my eyes, one of the most badass weapons in all of Tarkov, in forms of looks and just how much of an impact it can make. Because let's face it, this 7.62 round is big. So just to reiterate and just to point out that this gun is something you really want to uh, go for, even in this final supreme form, Recoil is going to be something you'll always have to take into consideration and get used to, as there aren't any other guns in this game, I can really think of at least, that kick like this even after being fully modded. But once you acclimatize yourself and find your footing with the playstyle of this gun, the best execution here in my eyes is to always hip fire and point fire at anything within 50 meters, only relying on ADSing when you are at least not spotted or have the element of surprise, and you have the time to actually ADS in the first place. Or when your enemy is far enough away for you to need to do so, especially if you're using slightly longer range optics. But even at this stage, going full auto while ADSing will have your optic going all over the place, so you will need to take this into consideration when aiming at your enemy. Generally speaking, aiming at the central body mass of the torso will usually line up your shots with the head quite nicely. The less geared we have with the SA-58, the more we will need to rely on hip firing and using semi-auto fire mode to be as accurate as possible. The more this weapon becomes... The, the less geared this weapon becomes, the more of a semi-auto sniping gun it becomes, if you will. You can sort of use that analogy. Less gear, more like semi-auto. More gear, the more we can rely on going full auto. But this is also, in my eyes, one of the main reasons why this becomes a great choice for high firepower, but having a clear indication as to how much of a difference modding can make between the different forms of this gun. As when you start out with its bare variant, you're relying much more on your personal control. But as you put the mods on, as you put foregrips on, different butt stocks, different pistol grips, you suddenly realize just how big of a difference these attributes can make to a gun that is initially almost unwieldy. I know a lot of you may not agree with my opinion on this, on how much I love this gun, but hey, that's what Tarkov's all about. It's about finding out what works for you, and that's what I like to advocate with these videos. And maybe just by watching this video, you might get that little bit of an inspiration to try a gun you may not have tried before. So, let me know what you think of the SA-58 down in the comments, guys. I would love to get your opinions. What's, maybe you've got some different variants of this gun that you've modded yourself and found works really well. If you have, do let me know. I do read the comments as and when I can, and I'd love to get your opinions on it, guys. So, hopefully this video has been informative. Hopefully you've learned something. If you feel like joining us with our content creation as we do record these on stream, or maybe just want to come and join us for some new player in friendly environment and a place where we just play games together, then drop by my Twitch. There'll be a link down below. Maybe pop a follow my Twitter as well. And I'll see all of you top hatters in the next video. Ah, that was a terrible idea. Maybe I won't be injured in the